We want to use the washer method to determine the volume of the solid formed when the region bended by y equals x and y equals x cubed is rotated about the y-axis over the interval x greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So because we have rotation about the y-axis or a vertical axis, we'll be using this formula here to determine the volume using the washer method. Where the volume equals pi times the integral from c to d of the square of big R of y minus the square of little r of y integrated with respect to y. Where big R of y is the outer radius and little r of y is the inner radius. Notice how here, because we have rotation about the y-axis, or actually for any vertical axis of rotation, we'll be integrating with respect to y, and therefore we must express big R of y and little r of y as functions of y, even though they're given as functions of x. So for the first step, let's go ahead and graph y equals x and y equals x cubed to determine the bounded region over this interval, and then look at the solid if we rotate this region about the y-axis. So in green we have the graph of y equals x cubed, and in blue we have the graph of y equals x. So this yellow region is the bounded region, the axis of rotation is the y-axis, so we're rotating this region about the y-axis, which will give us this solid here, so our goal is to find the volume of this solid. We can also tell from the graph these two functions intersect at the origin, which is the point zero comma zero, as well as the point one comma one. The problem gave us the closed interval for x from zero to one, which showed us how the interval for y would be the same from zero to one, and that's important because remember we are integrating with respect to y. To help us set up the integral and find big R of y and little r of y, it's always helpful to sketch a representative rectangle shown here in red, where if we were to rotate this rectangle about the y-axis, it would give us one washer volume of our solid. Notice how the thickness or width of this rectangle would be delta y, once again indicating we'll integrate with respect to y. Big R of y is the outer radius, which should be the distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on y equals x cubed, which means big R of y would be this distance. The inner radius would be the distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on the blue graph given by y equals x, so this would be little r of y. So because big R of y is the distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on the function y equals x cubed, because we need to express the outer radius as a function of y, we need to solve this equation for x. So if we take the cube root of both sides of the equation, arrays both sides of the equation to the one-third power, we can say x equals y to the one-third, which means big R of y is equal to y raised to the power of one-third. Now for little r of y, again, it's the horizontal distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on y equals x. Well, if y equals x, of course, we can write x equals y, and therefore little r of y is equal to y, which means the volume v is equal to pi times the integral. We're integrating with respect to y. The interval for y over this bounded region would be from zero to one along the y-axis. So limits integration are from zero to one. And then we have the square of big R of y, which should be y to the one-third squared minus the r of y squared, which should be just y squared integrated with respect to y. Now that we have our integral, let's evaluate this on the previous slide. We'd have pi times integral from zero to one of, here we have y to the two-thirds minus y squared. Now we'll find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of y to the two-thirds would be y to the five-thirds divided by five-thirds, or three-fifths y to the five-thirds. Remember, we obtained the five-thirds as the exponent because we added one to two-thirds. Then we have minus y to the third divided by three, or minus one-third y to the third. Now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a. So we'll have pi times, when y is equal to one, we just have three-fifths times one to the five-thirds minus one-third times one to the third. And then when y is zero, both terms would be zero. 
simplifying, we just have pi times the quantity three-fifths minus one-third. Here the common denominator would be 15, so we multiply three-fifths by three over three and one-third by five over five. So here we have nine-fifteenths minus five-fifteenths, which is four-fifteenths. So the volume is equal to four pi divided by 15 cubic units. Of course, we can also get our decimal approximation if we wanted. Four pi divided by 15 is approximately 0 0.8378. And again, of course, this would be cubic units. So here's the exact volume, and here's the approximate volume, which again would be the volume of this solid here formed by rotating this bounded region about the y-axis. I hope you found this helpful.